All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the round table here at Calvary Assembly of God. All right. Pastor Matt, would you greet us tonight and then open us in prayer and we'll get into the word. God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for an excitement. I pray that you would help us to honor you. Uh, both as we listen, I pray that we will be blessed because we talk about Revelation, we hear about Revelation, we read Revelation. Um, continue to bless us, this church, our families. Help us to honor you in every conversation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're in Revelation chapter 18, so if you would turn there. Uh, it's going to be a, a chapter again about judgment. Surprise. But remember, the book title is The Revelation of Jesus Christ. So we have to remember somewhere in the personality of the Godhead, there is a factor where judgment is carried out after much grace has been given. In other words, if you find yourself on the end of God's judgment, you can't ever say that God didn't give you the opportunity of grace. Um, we will see that even in this chapter tonight, that there's still one more call to get God's people out of the way of his wrath. And it's a fascinating reality that when the final count of those that are actually cast into the eternal abyss of hell, we can only assume one thing. They actually want to be there. They don't want to be in the abode of God. They don't want to be around godly people. They find themselves in the abode of hell because they have make it, made every decision to oppose the will of God, oppose the grace of God, and end up in this place that they actually want to be in. I don't think they know what they're asking for once they get there. They but <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and often do people make that joke, um, I'll sell air conditioners in hell and yeah. drink lots of beer or whatever, but... Uh, unfortunately, those commodities will not uh, be available <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. But uh, let's get into Revelation uh, chapter 18. <clears throat> Again, before we get into this chapter, we have to, uh, uh, a reminder from verse 18 in the chapter before. The woman who you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So the prior chapter is telling us that the woman who's going to face the judgment of God in this chapter is actually a city. Y'all okay with that? So we can almost interchange. Anytime the word city is used or woman is used, it's the same, same entity. It's the same thing. And it is interchanged throughout this chapter here. All right, so here we go, chapter 18. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having a great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. How about that imagery? All right, so again, we have John seeing a vision of something that's happening in the future where an angel steps out of the heavenly abode, and as this angel does step into earthly atmosphere, the illumination of God's presence is all over this being. Um, I don't know if you've ever been freaked out by lights or something in the atmosphere that doesn't seem to belong there uh, but this this would count in that category like whoa that doesn't happen every day <laughs> this is a phenomenon of angelic beings stepping into this atmosphere and for what reason we'll begin to see and he cried mightily with a loud voice saying babylon the great is fallen is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. What in the world are we reading now? Uh, Pastor Matt, you want to get in, into it with us? So I did some research on, now it doesn't say here in this scripture, but it says uh, you'll see over 200 and 246 times in the Bible, 247 times in the Bible, you will see the God of angel armies. Mm -hmm. So in our devotions or in my devotions right now, I'm actually in the middle of Isaiah and I'm noticing over and over and over and over. And I, I, you'll see it in Psalms, but in Isaiah, it's, it's, there's a lot of them in Isaiah and it's the God of angel armies. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't know if this is what it's going to look like, 
But do you ever have, okay, the, the battle's over and you're watching the movie, but the battle's over, that star warrior, the star of the, of the day comes in. He's kind of messed up, a little bloody, you know, just you know, clothes are kind of ripped off and he just barely won the war. And he's like, we got victory, we won. And the people celebrate. Mm -hmm. I can almost see that happening where he looks and he says, was it verse number two? And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen. And you can almost see him take the brow and the sweat and just kind of, it's like, my job is done. I did it. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're, we went through this. So we see it taking place with the bowls of the, uh, the chapter beforehand. It seems like this is the victory speech. It, yeah. it, are, are you, is that what you're seeing? Because this is the God of angel armies, plural. Yeah. This is a bad dude right here, man. He knows how to fight. This is another one, it says, if you see that first verse, I saw another angel. Likewise to verse number 17, or chapter 17, one of the seven angels, and now 18, then another angel. This is the God of angel armies. He's got a massive army right here. You think this could be Michael? Could be Our Michael. I've, yeah, I've seen Ma Michael, Gabriel. It, it's a big dog uh, right. angel, that's for sure. Um, the declaration here over a city, Babylon. Um, it, it, it is a throwback to the book of Genesis once again. It's like, where, why? I mean, Babylon as a place geographically is not a place. It's, it's different. It's different geographically. You, you can't unroll the map and say, well, there's Babylon. Um, it's, it's the Middle East. It's Saudi Arabia. It's, it's that part of the world. And, and you're just like, okay, is that what God is talking about here? Or is this, again, is this a throwback to the original Tower of Babel where the first actual rebellion against God occurred? Which I believe this is a reference to. Because this city, this, this uh, is a personification of a harlot that commits atrocities against God's people. And in that prison of harlotry, or in that prison of a city called Babylon, exist every foul spirit and every demon has become prisoner, encamped, encapsulated in this type of city. And uh, for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. And you, you think, all right, there's a lot of imagery going on here. Uh, and I know that a lot of people want to determine, well, where is the geographical location of this mighty city that's fallen? And I think that, you know, you're going to find scholars that are going to say cities. They're going to find places and say, look how awful this place is. It must be there. But I think they're missing the point. I think the point is the personification of evil, either in a person, a harlot, or in a city as famous as Babylon, is filled with rebellion and every foul spirit. And this, this angel says, we've conquered it. It's done. I don't care what you, influence you think it has over your life. It doesn't have that influence anymore. We've dealt with it. I don't know what your study landed you in. There, there, on there's that. two main cities. Like, if you wanted an actual specific location, again, like Pastor Kevin was saying, I don't think it's relevant which city that we, we could argue. But I think it's a waste of argument. Um, I've seen some uh, histor or not historians, some theologians say Rome. Mm -hmm. I've seen some theologians say Jerusalem. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking if you can go back to the ch previous chapter. Remember the harlot and the massive forehead with the tattoo. Remember that study last week? Um, if it were me, I was the Antichrist. Where's the city of David? Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. If I were to really step on his toes and show that, no, I'm, I'm God now. I don't know. I would make it Jerusalem. I, I kind of go back to David. Remember when David was running for his life for how many times that mm -hmm. happened? But King David was running for his life, and his son takes over, and he hears his son is coming in. And what does he do? He leaves. And what does the son do? He proclaims his kingdom in now the city of David. 
-hmm. No, this is my, not only is this my kingdom, I'm going to go to his house and sleep with his concubines mm -hmm. in front of everybody in the open. Mm -hmm. blatantly say i'm in charge now i don't know i can see the dragon i could see the antichrist i can see this harlot taking over jerusalem because oh this you think this is this is god's territory no this is mine now yeah okay i'm not i'm not camping on jerusalem is babylon but i can see that argument i can also yeah. see rome i could see a number of different areas las vegas <laughs> vegas yeah <laughs> After, the, after, after 70 AD, when Jerusalem was destroyed, uh, the, 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 the next emperor of Rome, Hadrian, he even changed the name and he tried to wipe, he tried to make it so that Jerusalem never existed. And, and it was renamed, I think it was called Hadria Capitolia, mm -hmm. Hadrian's capital. Right. And so he tried to make it go away. Yeah, and of course we've been looking at that Satan has a counterfeit for everything. Right. He wants to do whatever God does. Right. And so I could see it taking Jerusalem. Yeah. But I think what you guys are saying, it's more not really like we're fixed on a place. It's more of a, a notion, a way of life. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a couple. That, you know, Babylon economically, Babylon yeah. spiritually. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, it becomes the Mecca, the capital, if you will, of the Antichrist in the end times. Yeah, I, I would argue there starts. there has to be an economic central there's got to be a place where his palace and throne and all it's got to be somewhere I, yeah but this this scripture i believe is typology especially the reference to babylon i don't think we're looking for babylon i think this babylon reference is to genesis the tower of babel this known entity of complete rebellion against god mm -hmm. and so the other th thing i noted here is that again we have antichrist satanic rebellion doing its worst work and god doesn't even lift a finger he sends an angel <laughs> i just marvel at that because a lot of people again think that god the opposite of god is the devil nope the devil is a created being an angelic being and god says i know how to deal with you i'll send another created angelic being and he will defeat you so just think of that reality that God doesn't have to do anything to defeat evil. He already did everything that he can do, and it was at the cross. Calvary wins the victory over sin, period. And so now we're watching the fallout of all of those who refuse the free gift of salvation, and the, the entity of rebellion is Babylon, and we're seeing it in all of its full sail uh, drifting into failure. So uh, verse 3, for all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance <clears throat> of her luxury. Um, I think if we, if we go back to the destruction of the planet at this point, but there's an icon and a beacon of royalty in the harlotry of this city if you team with us you're going to have something to eat you're going to have something to wear if you team with us and you take the mark of the beast and all of that we're going to take care of you we're the only entity that has any money any wealth anything that would resemble success if you link arms with us we will certainly have it for you is that what you're seeing yeah i actually have a note in my bible that says uh, when we connect ourselves with sin and false religion we could try to hide all day long but there's a connection with our behavior we can justify this behavior this behavior this behavior all day long but god judged the heart right and that's where we're you cannot hide what's going on in here even though you might can hide what's happening in in, in church service you can hide what's happening in on the outside for everybody else to see but what's happening inside here determines you're hanging out with the the, the harlot or, or, or a false religion, whatever the case may be. It's, it's not about the actual individual thing, but once we connect ourselves with sin and false doctrine or false teaching or false religions, there's a penalty for it. Yeah, and I would take it one step further. You know, I, I got, after reading this chapter, I was thinking again about how um, we set people up for success um, at a very early age in our country and the school system with the guidance office, the guidance department. They start asking you questions somewhere around middle school. What do you want to be when you grow up? We start doing some testing to find out if you're 
wheelhouse can even handle what your dream is. And then if you are a good match for what you're projecting and where you're at intellectually, they will begin to school you either in uh, college prep classes or if you're not fit for college, they'll start to put you in other classes that fit you more for uh, uh, a career that doesn't need college necessarily. And so these would be um, uh, not uh, the professional careers, but the blue collar worker. And so there's a, a clear divide. And I, I noticed it in middle school. I said, there's a clear divide. The, the people I hang with are going to college. There's another group that is going to trade school, and they already drew the dividing line in school. And what is that doing? It's setting everybody up, no matter what their career, they're setting you up for eventual success that in this world system, if you just go along with it, you will be successful, you will reach your paycheck, you will get all the things that come with that paycheck, and then Jesus comes along. Sell it all, forsake it all, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it's like, whoa! I mean, and I've had a lot of people come to me, does Jesus really want me to quit my job? Does he really want me to become a missionary? Does he really want me? Well, that's a calling on your life. And being a missionary at your job is also a calling. So it's hard for me to be Jesus in the middle of that question. It's a very difficult, complex question. But it, that question was entertained by a very wealthy man that wanted to enter into the kingdom of God. And Jesus nailed him. He said, it's, it's your hunger for wealth and riches that has you all tied up. If you would get rid of that, then you can go onward and preach the gospel and lead others in the direction they need to go. And he didn't like that answer. He turned away from Jesus. So we do have a clear stalemate, I think, when it comes to what does God want from me anyway? What does the world want from me? And how do we reconcile these two things? And then we have a passage like this where judgment is coming against the system that all it does is make people wealthy. God is judging it because it's sheer evil in all of its splendor. And he's saying, we have, we have people over here that sacrificed everything and gave up the wealth of the world to preach the gospel, to live the gospel, and project the gospel. And all they did, you know, all they did was uh, thinking, saying, and doing the will of God. So this is a real crunch on the system that we've all grown up on. And we have to ask ourselves some very important questions. I, I'm let a cat out of the bag here. Pastor Matt, I don't know how you feel about uh, what I've said and, and how do you reconcile some of these things, success and... And I think we've got to be careful with, with, with comparing, okay, if you have money, you're not in God's will. Right. I, I don't think that's what we're saying. I don't think that's relevant to Scripture. What I think it is, get rid of the business, get rid of the job... If you're addicted to sports, if you're addicted to working out, if you're mm -hmm. addicted, if you, if you spend anything and put anything in front of God, it becomes a God. Mm -hmm. And now you're breaking the Ten Commandments. Right. I think that's the point. The point is not, it's not that you're, you're trying to get a better job to better yourself in life. It's not about that. It's about if I'm going to put God and the church and what God has called in my life on the second shelf— and my first shelf is a better home, a better paycheck. No, no you're missing it. Right. It's, it, it's not about the paycheck. It's about putting God on the top shelf, and he's first. And then from there, you watch him bless you. Yeah. And, and one of his gifts is a gift of wealth yeah. because he knows what you'll do with it when he's the priority. So, uh, again, we're not preaching against wealth and, or uh, anything like that, but we're saying be careful. It's a slippery slope when, when the system that we're in puts that as the goal and God's not part of it at all. At all. That's, that's what I believe I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, because basically what they're saying in middle school is, okay, so the blue-collar construction workers, garbage men, you guys are lower class. No. You know how important those people are? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with those jobs. But we have a tendency of saying, oh, because you didn't go to college, you're a loser. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not what they're saying. We, we need these jobs. There are really good, unbelievable workers in these fields that never went to college. Awesome. Yeah. 
And there are some crappy, miserable, really educated rich people out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, t- yeah. I'll take the garbage men and stuff all day long. Yeah, I I'll agree. deal with them much more. I agree. Um, so I hope we didn't mess up the scripture for you tonight. Uh, I, I think we're just trying to say that the systems of this world, not only America, but systems, plural, around the world, are geared this way. Because what glitters does attract people. Say, like, ooh, if I could just have that, mm-hmm. then I'll be somebody. And I, I believe what Scripture is trying to say is some of these things are a mirage. All that glitters is not gold, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. So uh, continuing, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. So do you see the grace jumping out in verse 4 and 5? Like, there's this judgment happening on a system, and God says, by the way, if I have any people in there, come on out. Come out, show yourselves. Maybe they're in hiding. I don't know what your take on is, uh, come out. But I feel like they're in hiding against the system that is flooding wickedness everywhere, and they're saying, we're not going to have any part of it. And God says, come on out now. You could come out from hiding. Uh, I'm going to protect you. This is your last opportunity because I'm about to slam this system like it's never been slammed before. And I think this is a, I think this is one and of the same situation. If you remember, this is not a linear thing. Right. Uh, a number of weeks ago, we talked about the, the sickle. Remember that? Where, where, where Jesus comes down and starts wiping out everything. I think it's, this is one and of the same. Uh, I heard one commentary say that that verse right there, number uh, verse number four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people believe that voice is who? It's Christ. And what was Jesus doing right before when he's holding that sickle? They gave him one more opportunity. I see this and the sickle chapter of being one and of the same. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's what, what I'm we're just trying saying. to say. This is not a linear it's not, thing. It's not this follows that. It's like we're coming around like a merry-go-round to the same situation and piling on top to say this is what it looks like from another cam- camera angle. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the member of uh, the, the, um, the Battle of Armageddon. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, at least we're going to talk about this during the sickle. However, in chapter 17, I believe, is actually the Battle of Armageddon. So uh, God's going to give some commands here um, that belong in the hands of the godly, uh, but oppression is going to come out from them, the angelic person, uh, the godly here, and God's going to just speak his mind over this fornication, this wickedness. God's going to speak, and here's what he's going to say. Render to her just as uh, she rendered to you. Repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Um, again, I see the people of God being allowed a moment. Come on out. You thought she controlled you. I'm giving you permission to control her and her city, this city, in the next few moments of your life. Burn it down. I don't know if you see that. <laughs> yeah, what I see, like, when I read that first time is uh, that verse number six. Can anybody see uh, Starbucks here? Anybody see Starbucks in this verse? <laughs> render her just as she rendered to you. You want a coffee? Go get her a coffee. And repay her double. Give her a double espresso. <laughs> right? Charge give her the, 20 bucks give her, for it. Yeah, charge 20 bucks for it. Again, remember what I was saying earlier? Like, you, you can hide all day long from, from sin or false religion. You can hide in the midst of that to make it look like you're following God, but you're really not. You can hide that all day long. But these are the verses that's the scary stuff. 
These are the verses. I Render to her just as she rendered to you. Pay evil on her, but do it double portion. Again, it's, okay, so if I'm one of those individuals, I'm going to get punished. I'm going to be given a nasty cup of coffee. But the double espresso bad cup, cup of coffee is for her. Mm-hmm. Is, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm still in trouble. It, it says double the punishment. That means everybody else is still getting punished. Right? You, do, you, do you see that? Yeah. Double punishment for the person that started it. Yeah. Unless you come out of her. Unless, yeah. And I, I do. I see these people that are coming out getting to do some of the serving here. You're gonna, they're going to serve God in this, this way. Uh, I, I see it. I don't know if it's completely accurate, but I do see the people of God that are coming out somehow rendering to her what she rightly deserves. And the, uh, and the line that gets me is, strong is the Lord God who judges her. So I, I believe we're watching a shift from angelic hand of God to now people hand of God rendering to complete evil system what it rightly deserves. That's powerful to me. It speaks to me in what we even get to do in this church age where we get to speak the truth of God's word in a wicked generation and see God prevail in miracles. And uh, we have them all the time, right? Our past meets our present, and we look at our past and say, what do you have over me? (laughs) Nothing, because the shed blood of Jesus Christ was enough, right? Uh, The kings of the earth, verse 9, who committed fornication and live luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So you, you see the collapse, right? The saints, if you will, angelic or otherwise, that burn the city down and they are saying, oh no, this was the only icon left that brought us wealth and it's burning down. So there's a complete panic button that's being hit here. Uh, Verse 10, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. I, I I remember when the mall in my hometown went south Mm -hmm. Uh, the big box stores at the end closed first they tried to keep them all alive without the big box stores they moved a off track horse betting mechanism into one of the box stores (laughs) thinking that that would work sadly no one came for that either and then eventually bulldozers came and knock the whole thing down. And people were literally shot with cameras, weeping over what used to be. And I thought, why? <laughs> it wasn't that good of a mall anyway. <laughs> but um, that, that's what we're seeing here. I used to get wealthy there. I used, to, I used to work there. I used to make a living there. And now it's being knocked over by bulldozers. My, my life is meaningless. You know, that, that's kind of what I see happening here. It's just like, I can't sell my trinkets there. That was my last hope. It was my last hope. And think of these evil people that are trying to keep hope alive for their families. For whatever. They've taken the mark of the beast. They've contributed a part of this to say, hey, you promised that if we linked arms with you, this thing was going to play out for us. And now the city's burning. And now we can't sell our stuff. Do you see the level of betrayal that these people are going through? Mm -hmm. They trusted in the system and the system failed. Mm -hmm. Pastor Matt, anything on on the collapse of uh, the system? This is a a, a mimic, a copy and paste, if you will, of what happened the chapter beforehand. We remember with the the harlot, you know, they're partners. Yeah. I'm going to get people to fall away. Yes, go do that. And the moment he's done with her, the moment the beast, the moment the Antichrist is done with the harlot, I, I, I don't care yeah. about you. Yeah, I'm done with you anyway. It's not about you. Hey, take the mark of the beast. We'll protect you. Remember the Bible says over and over and over that this leader will t- be in charge for an hour? Yeah. A very short time. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very short. And it was really high, 
and it's laying really bad. And after that, it's like, I don't care about, I don't care if you have the mark of the beast or not. That's going to help you for what, six months? Like, it, this is going to be a tough time. It's like, why in the world would you take the mark of the beast? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Like, I have no idea why you would take the mark of the beast. Because no. they're looking at this moment right here, right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate to make the clear analogy, but it's like um, COVID and what do I have to do to get back to normal? So there, there's some benchmarks that the government entities put in front of you and say, well, if you would like to go back to normal, we're going to have to do this. And everybody box, and the, well, then you're going to have to do this. It, it's the same here because we people don't change. Tell me what the benchmark is so we can get back to normal. And I don't think normal is going to be normal anymore. It's just going to keep getting more unnormal. And the more unnormal it gets, there's still this hunger. I just want to get a paycheck, sell my stuff, and go home and feed my kids. And there's a sense that we all have that within us. We want the comfort and security of what these things give us. And this system promises, and then it's empty on the other side. And now, now we have, we're going to have a laundry list of things that were in the system that are now gone. Listen to the list. Um, verse 12, merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men, also that would mean slaves. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. You took the mark, you were promised these goods and a whole lot more, and now those are all gone too. What are you left with? Absolutely nothing. And we were told in a prior chapter, if you take the mark of the beast, you're out. You've linked arms with wickedness, and there's no coming back from that. So now you don't have anything on earth, and you can't go to heaven. Right, sir? <laughs> Eureka, we have a student in the room. <laughs> yeah. What a moment, Christine, right? Let's... The light bulb has come on. Like this system, no matter how much it promises, has empty promises and nothing to offer. I mean, it had stuff to offer, but it's all gone. Remember James Dobson? Yeah. He said it the best one time. He said, it's, it's like a monopoly game. At the end of the game, every piece goes back in the box. Yeah, it's all over. It's over. It's no one keep, you don't get to keep Park Place. That goes back in the box. Yeah. Everything. Somebody's going to get it next game. It's a little thimble back in the box. <laughs> it all goes back in the box. But then we, now we go back to the matador with the cape and the bull. It, when you make a list of everything that's just mentioned here, and say, if you get this mark, we'll take care. Look, I know what your profession is. I don't care what, what you do for a living. We got you. Mm -hmm. we, I'll bring you to this city I'll bring you to this town and we'll set this thing up it's going to be amazing it's going to be great you're going to get great riches and they do for a season right. and once they're done with you <laughs> oh well Yeah. think of the betrayal of hell satanic influence and all that it promises and how many of us have been shortchanged on the promises already that darkness has tried to offer us and we're like, wait a minute, how many times do I have to fall for this before I start to get it right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And still people are falling for it all the way up to this point. And I think there's going to be just this amazing, well, maybe there's not going to be revelation because their, their psyche is dimmed. Their hearts are darkened and their foul spirits are caged in this system. It betrays them and it's just like, well, we're all in the same burning cage, I guess. And I can see them doing the whole, we, we would never do this to you. It's those people over there that never received the mark 
that, that they burned the city down. Yeah, they burned the city down. We would have never done this to you. They're in this area. Let's go get them. Yep. You see how it comes back again to the Battle of Armageddon? They got them riled, riled up for a fight. Yeah. Think of the media that's playing that over and over again. Yeah. See these nasty Christians? They burnt down our city. Let's get them. So uh, where are we at? Verse 6. 15. 15. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who traveled by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea stood at a distance. Everybody's backing up. <laughs> right and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what is like this great city were any of you part of the movement of burning your rock albums or cassettes at any point in your life mm. no <laughs> it's a fun thing to do first of all <laughs> that was really big in the 80s and 90s yeah um there's nothing like yeah. the, the coloration of cassette tape. Some of you don't even know what a cassette tape is. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. they were mechanisms for sound and, and music. It was recorded on tape. And it was this wonderful thing you could rewind and fast forward and play on, on a, a cassette player. But we were instructed, I believe, in the same time period. Mm -hmm that rock music was evil and bad and we needed to get rid of that evil out of our home and there was only one way to do it. Burn, Burn it. <laughs> they created quite a fire, I will tell you, and Pastor Matt said of his albums, that great hissing. <laughs> it does. And so many reports came out, that's the demons coming out of the... <laughs> but... Uh, I, I think we're watching the same thing here. Everybody stand back and that was it. That was our last. That was it. Look at it. Look at it burn. Look at the look at the coloration. Look at the heat. Look at the expanse of what is burning. This was our last great hope. Babylon had it all for us, and now it's gone. And now it hisses back at them, if you will. Anything on that? Testament. Yeah, the, it, just because we just went through 9-11, I mean, if you can remember, especially when that second plane hit the building and you're watching live, I, I was watching it live on TV, I saw the second uh, tower hit, and I remember, I, I've only been in New York once at that moment, I remember thinking, li life is completely different right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know what tomorrow looks like. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's like a 1% scale yeah, this is of what's really happening. Like all the like, um, so so the mark of the beast. Who doesn't have the mark of the beast? Who does? I'm 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 seeing like this massive, major computer that has all that information and how to hunt people down of it's where gone. they where they're located. All that's housed in Babylon. Mm -hmm. And now it's gone. Now it's gone. It's like that's where our servers were. That's that's where our find that everything is gone. Yeah. Like, what do we do now? I'm, the anger. Even the geek squads that run that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Our backup servers were in the next building, and that's gone. Yeah, what are we going to do if now? If you remember, the earthquake came, and it broke that city up in threes. Yep. I mean, it destroyed this city. Uh, verse 19. They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing and saying alas alas that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth for in one hour she's made desolate she made us all wealthy and now she's broke rejoice over her don't you love the shift <laughs> like this is a pretty nasty chapter and all of a sudden we've got rejoice over her O heaven and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. So we're talking like Jeremiah, Isaiah, all these people in the Old Testament that you thought these guys never got any justice. They went to the grave as enemies of the, the people, and there they lied in ruins. 
And God says, oh no, there will come a moment in time when I will avenge each of the apostles, the, the 12 disciples of Christ were martyred for the cause of Christ, except for John. John was in the island of Patmos, banished, imprisoned. But before he got here, they did try to kill him in a cauldron of boiling oil, and it didn't work. Can you imagine that moment? <laughs> Let's dip him in the oil. He's just shiny. <laughs> it didn't work. Why didn't he burn? Well, we'll just put him in prison, I guess. So God is avenging the death and treatment of his people on this system, which, which harkens again back to Genesis to say it's not a city. It's, an, it's a rebellion that has a thread line throughout society, and it has its, its features and its features are unchanging. It's filled with immorality and greed and idolatry and adultery and all of this temptress attitude that promises you everything and gives you nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is saying. That system has been along, alive for a long time and it treated our people poorly and we're avenging them in this moment. Pastor Matt? I like the way the NLT says it right there. Rejoice over her fate. Yeah. Not rejoice over her per se, but rejoice over her fate. Like this result, these behaviors, these actions, this is, this is who you serve, this is the fate. Rejoice over that because our fate is different. Like our choices here determine where we spend eternity. Rejoice over that fate. Yeah, I think there's a verse for that. The wages of sin is death, yeah. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When, when you see the comparison, well, rejoice that that's not your fate. Rejoice that this is your, your destiny, as it were. Uh, verse 21, Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus, uh, with the violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. So to go back to Pastor Matt's illustration, our servers were in that building. You know there's somebody going to try. Maybe we can salvage some of this. And in the moment of salvage comes, boom. <laughs> uh, it's all dust now. There's no salvaging this system. It is finished. Pastor Matt, anything else on that? No, that's good. It's, it's just one of those things that, it's almost like a weed. You know, you think you got all the weeds, and it's like, oh, there's one there. Oh, no, I, I got it. I got it. Because, <laughs> I mean, you, you know how it is. Like the first day that the Twin Towers go down, they're already on site. Let's, let's, let's salvage this thing. You yeah. know darn well they're doing the same thing. This is a massive earthquake. All our hopes and dreams, our finances in this city, let's do everything we can to get it back. All right, good. Everybody's in place. Give me that, give me that rock. You know what I mean? Crazy, isn't it? I mean, I remember that, that that's been mentioned before, mm -hmm. biblically. Yeah. And, and I think that was the first time that's ever been mentioned, and this is the second time. And, you know, better to, it, it's better to have a millstone tied around your neck yeah. and thrown in than, than mislead right. any one of these. And here I see it again. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I see Old Testament. I see... New Testament, it's, everything's coming to fulfillment here. Yeah. And the signs have been there in the beginning if we'd have been watching. Yeah. Yeah, I know Pastor Matt's brought this up before that, you know, people want to say that hurricanes and tornadoes and natural phenomenon that have been happening for a lot of years are sometimes we cast God's judgment on it. He doesn't need help with a hurricane. Like if he wants to destroy something, he'll just throw an upper millstone <laughs> out of heaven and it's done. You understand what I'm saying? And I, I know there's some battle on that. God can use those things to get a country's attention and an economy, get, get our attention. We just, we've been wiped out. I, I don't doubt that, but the reality of what's happening here is on purpose. This is an event from heaven to earth that says, boom, it's done, it's over. Uh, the sound, verse 22, the sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters, uh, 
shall not be heard in you anymore. Uh, no craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. Uh, this seems like an, kind of an obvious, but it's there for a reason. Everything was supplied here, even entertainment, and the finest musicians, wherever they were all over the world, were gathered and said, you need to play in Babylon. We need your talents here, because when people come to this city, they're going to know they were wined and dined and had the finest experiences of all. And not even that, because, you know, when things, when things have a funeral, there's always the musicians, right, playing the dirge, playing the sounds of... Bum, bum, bum. It's over. Nope. God's saying, we're not even giving you the decency of the musicians. They're gone too. The instruments are gone. The musicians are gone. It's all over. Do you hear what he's saying here? There's not even an opportunity for the godless to have a moment of demise and feel good about it with the music that adds to it is what I get from that. I don't know. It's that, old, you know, anything birthed in sin, you could, you could dress it up all day long, but it's still a pig in a dress with lipstick. Right. Right? You, you, you won't rebuild. Th this was Antichrist's last, first effort, and it's futile. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely futile. I saw one commentary uh, actually say that this is the end of the work age. Like we're not laboring anymore after this. After this point, yeah. There's no more labor. There's no more any of that. It's gone. Yeah. The fight turns heavenly, yeah. and it's it's just as as minuscule. Every everybody becomes military personnel, thinking they're going to fight God, and it's ridiculous. Uh, verse twenty three: The light of the lamp shall not shine in you anymore, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. What do you see? There were still some Christians roaming around. They're called out. I see here the, the message of Christ is, is also, it's gone. It's, it's, gone. Mm -hmm. it's all gone. Any light of a lamp, gone. This, this is an eerily silent moment on the face of the earth and the history of the earth. I, I still don't know if there's an uh-oh moment for the people that are in it. I really don't know. I think that their soul has been checked out. Yeah. I really do. I don't think there's like, uh-oh, we're going to hell now. I, I think there's a hatred for God that keeps pressing to say, well, we'll come back from this somehow, but not through these ways. We'll, we'll get our day. And I think that that's the prevailing wind uh, of the inhabitants of earth at this point. This would be like the commercial snap of, hey, here's a, here's a picture of hell for you. How bad can it get? But I don't think they believe that at that point. If you, it, again, a few chapters earlier, we see these demons going throughout the whole world, collecting all these people. Look at what they did to Babylon. Look at what they do. Let's come all together, all as one. Stop, stop separating ourselves in these 10 different sections, 10 different countries again. Let's all come together and let's take them out so we can rule this world. I think that's their mindset. I think, oh yeah, we can take them. We outnumber them. This is going to be easy. Um, I, the, the slave part, you know, what we were talking about a few verses before. Who do you think the slaves are? The Christians. That's what I believe. Right, yeah. Who else is going to be slaves? Right. They can't go shopping, so they got to eat at that place. If they want to eat at that place, they got to sell themselves to the people. Right. And now they become slaves again. Yeah. That's what I see happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all this stuff is coming together. Babylon has fallen. These demons go out. They collect all these individuals, and they all come to the one location because they're going to take out God and all the Christians. Yeah. Uh, we see great men in verse 23, and sorcery was what they used. Um, that, to me, jumped off the page. Yeah. Um, because this world system as it stands right now tries to be non-religious. They don't want any kind of allegiance to any entity, especially Christianity, 
they believe the system will stand on its own. But somewhere in the back workings, there's a voice saying, we've got to use something to trick the people. Everybody has some system of belief within them. We've got to feed that need, otherwise they won't follow us. Someone in their camp said, we've got to use witchcraft and sorcery to get the people to follow us. They won't follow us just because we're great men. That's a volatile thing when you, you mix <coughs> witchcraft and sorcery with political scheme and say, this is how we're going to sell it to the people. It, the it's, word sorcery is, is, is translated from the word pharmakia, right. which means drug. Right. right. So that, 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 that's how we control the people. We entice them with, we medicate them. Right. Uh, it's medicate them. And, and how many conspiracy theories have we come up with through the years of what's controlling people in every generation fluoride in the toothpaste remember that one yeah yeah so not wrong with me <laughs> fine we're good uh last verse uh speaking again about the city verse 24 says and in her was found the blood of the prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth in other words, if you're going to find anyone that was slaying Christians, it came out of this Babylonian wicked system. It's all housed in one central thought of God hatred, whether it is personified over here or over here, it comes out of this system and seeks and destroys Christianity. And God says, look, it's all housed in this system. That's why I killed the system. Does that make sense? Pastor Matt, last word. I think the, the landing of the plane for me is be very wise in where you stick your flag. Be, yeah. be very, very wise in where you camp. Yeah, where's your Even allegiance? though you might not feel like you're in the center of the camp, in the midst of everything going bad, if you're on the outskirts of the camp, you're still in the camp. You might not get all the penalty, if you will, that the, the harlot will do, you're still going to get nailed. Yeah. Being on the outskirts of the camp is still being in the camp. Be very wise in who you hang out with. Yeah, the football analogy would be there's people that go to the, the game and they're like painted. Oh, yeah. Head to toe. And there's somebody that said, well, I just want to buy a jersey. <laughs> Same camp. <laughs> yeah. Same judgment. You shouldn't be a Buccaneers fan. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm deleting that. <laughs> it's a little... A little fun. Um, but that, that's, that's the picture here. It's like, are you in with God? Or if not, you're on that, you're on that team. Yeah. You might not be as devoted as you think you are, but you're on that team. Yeah. So any questions, thoughts? Good study, right? Yeah. You enjoy yeah. this? Yeah. Is it helpful to you? Yes. Uh, a glimpse into the future that helps us live our now yes. with more integrity. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we get to have an allegiance to you through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for that invitation to be delivered from iniquity. And I pray that we would live exemplary lives that make sense in light of eternity. And Father, we ask this accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen.